Hi guys, and welcome back to another Ibracorp video. What an absolute pleasure to have you guys back here. It's really, really exciting. Thanks for your patience while we get another video out there. In today's video, we're gonna be going through the top 10 tools that we found and those provided by our community to help you administer and manage your server. Now, while today we'll be showing you examples on Unraid for our Unraid community, pretty much all of these run in Docker, so it can work in anywhere that Docker is used, which is pretty much on every platform these days. So even if you're not using Unraid, the containers that we're gonna show you or the apps we're gonna show you today are still applicable to be used on any other service. Now before we get started, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has helped support the channel. We really appreciate all your support. But thanks to you, we've now hit 6,000 subscribers. That's exciting. And a lot of people tend to ask why we don't have more subscribers. And look, pretty much it comes down to algorithms. If you enjoy our work and you like what we're doing, please help by liking the videos and sharing them around in your communities to help get the word out there. So I hope you're excited. These are the 10 that we've narrowed down. Just to be clear, they're in no particular order, so not one is better than the other. These are just the top 10 that we've been able to compile. And this has been through feedback from our community as well. So not just something that myself have picked out or my team, this is something that we've asked the community to give us some feedback about. And some of these I haven't even been using until I put this list together. And I can assure you that after putting the list together, I'll be using most of these myself as well. So don't be surprised if you see them in upcoming videos. And the final note I wanna make is if you like one of the apps that we cover in today's video, because it's gonna be brief and an overview, if it's something you wanna see in detail, drop it in the comments below. Let us know your thoughts and we'll go into it a little bit deeper in a future video as well. So without further ado, let's just get stuck into it. Number one, Scrutiny. Now, a lot of people that I've spoken to haven't actually known about Scrutiny or they've seen it and sort of passed on and not knowing what it was. And I found it just by accident one day, to be honest, looking through the community app store. I can't believe I hadn't found it sooner. It's really a decent app that gives you clear cut information on your disks and drives without anything set up crazy on your system. It works completely out of the box and uses a built in SQL Lite database. So it's really fresh, really clean, gives you a lot of information. So here's their GitHub page, just so you're aware. There's a whole lot of information that's in here as well. How it, how it reports, how it works, how you deploy it on Docker, for example. Um, all the configuration options that you can set up, for example, notifications, whether you have a debug mode, web server API, and all that stuff built into it. Now, the beauty of Unraid for us here that are using Unraid is that it's on the community app store. So as soon as you go into the community app store, you'll see Scrutiny on there. I'm gonna give you a look at what it looks like using my web UI here. So here you can see what mine looks like, and it pretty much gives you the smart status, the temperature, the capacity, and how long the drive has been powered on for. And all this information has been logged straight into the app and I never really had to set anything up. If for some reason you wanted to go into the settings, you can go into settings here and you can sort out a couple of extra features. So you can say, what's the critical you know, error threshold that I wanna see before I'm alerted? For NVMe settings, what settings do I wanna have in there? Or the SCSI settings as well. So what you consider the critical warning threshold for it. You can then see a temperature range as well. So, you know, if you're worried about temperature in your drives, whether you're getting enough airflow, this is gonna give you that information. Really, really important. If you go to a particular disk, then you can actually see even more information. So you can dial down to, you know, what threshold's been hitting lately, what sort of errors it's been getting, uh, serial numbers, any sort of attributes. You know, you can see all of that information in there, easy to see. Now there is a feature for exporting, but it says as a highlight, not yet implemented. So if that's something that's gonna be coming out in future, I believe. But look, as it is, it's a pretty decent application. I'm sure if you wanted to get the data out, we can do that through the file directory, but it just sits there, runs passively, and gives you a nice clear view of your drive. So definitely one I recommend for managing and looking over your array and all your disks as well. Even in the cache, for example, with any NVMEs you might have on board. Next up is Midnight Commander. Now, whether you know about it or not, it's a very powerful tool that will allow you to manage your server through the command line, having ultimate permission and avoiding any sort of conflict issues. The alternative to Midnight Commander is something like Crusader. So if you haven't used Crusader, if we left click and go to Web UI, 
Crusader is a nice interface. It gives you a nice graphical user interface so that you can manage your files on the system. And Crusader is pretty easy to use. As you can see, it's got some shortcuts down the bottom here that we can use with the keyboard to allow us to, for example, edit stuff in the browser itself, to view the documents, to change them, to make directories, all that sort of stuff. But the most powerful tool that you can actually use on Unraid is Midnight Commander. So I'll show you that now. So we've gone into Unraid and we've clicked to open the terminal. In the terminal window, we just type MC. Next thing you know, you're presented with this screen. So in the terminal now, we can actually use our keyboard to use this interface, which looks very similar to Crusader, except it bypasses any sort of permission issues. You'll have absolutely no problem because it doesn't run in a container. We're running it straight on the system itself. So for example, if I just go back here, there's all of our different directories. So if I go to MNT, then we go to user, app data, and then we've got all of our app data folders here. So if I go to Matomo, for example, go to config. So if, for example, if you're having issues deleting a particular file or coming across some permission issues, it's probably best to do it through here. So then when you go into here, you can use the correct option and delete the file. And most of the time it will allow you to do so without running into any permissions problems. Next up while we're on the subject is Matomo. As a systems administrator, you probably have some websites and URLs that you're hosting yourself at home. Even if they're not hosted at home, perhaps you want to see the analytics of those websites without giving them to the big techs. For example, Google Analytics. So instead, you can have this hosted yourself so that you have 100% data ownership, as it says there on the page. Here we are on their website and you can see the different options that you've got. Now you can try Matomo in the cloud, and in that case, it would be costing a price. However, if you want to host it on premise, it's completely free and open source. As you can see, the user interface is actually pretty clean. There's not a lot in there to confuse you. In fact, I find it a lot cleaner than Google Analytics itself, which can be quite convoluted with all sorts of information in there that you probably will never actually use. From my personal experience, Matomo is probably on par or better than Google Analytics. The best part about it, of course, is that you can tell your customers that their data is safe and without having to hand it off to big techs to manage for you. Here's a couple of key notes. It is open source, like we said. It's 100% accurate according to their claims. Enhanced insights, it's easy to use, and tracking personal data is not a thing. Next up in the list is AdMiner. I've done plenty of videos with AdMiner, using it as a tool when we're using you know, other videos or setting up databases. But AdMiner gives you a graphical user interface to manage your databases. Now I'm not focused on just the one product. There is another option there for you as well, which is PHP MyAdmin. Works exactly the same, just a little bit different in the interface and uh, how it might be managed. Conversely to PHP MyAdmin, over here, as it says, it consists of a single file ready to deploy to the target server. So similar products, they go about things a little bit differently. So it's really up to you. And if you haven't seen it before, be sure to check out our creating a MariaDB database with AdMiner, and you'll get a nice insight into how it works and what it does. Like I said, like everything else, it's very easy to install using the community apps on Unraid, which is basically Docker on any other system. So the container is pretty straightforward. Um, I highly recommend you use it. It just makes life a little bit easier when you're managing databases. Next up is somewhat of a controversial one depending who you ask, and that's Portainer. The reason why I say controversial is in the Unraid world, we already have a Docker management interface which is built into Unraid. In some cases though, you might find that the Unraid UI doesn't provide enough functionality, and so you wanna look at a different tool. So Portainer allows you to have a central management panel to manage all your Docker containers. But further, you can also use Kubernetes and a very easy way to manage and deliver containers as a service. So as you see here, Kubernetes is hard. And so they try to make it as easy as possible by giving you the interface to manage it a lot simpler. Maybe perhaps you wanna stack multiple containers together. Uh, that sort of functionality, for example, Docker Compose, isn't built directly into Unraid. And so having a tool like Portainer could be the key to help you get there. Some key notes, it helps developers adopt containers. So make it easy for developers to deploy the applications without extensive training. So if you're a developer, it could be quite beneficial for you there. It's very efficient. You can fully automate app deployment. So you can do that you know, from end to end and develop those workflows so that it's completely automated. You don't even have to be a part of the process. Once you've set it up, you can then deploy even further. 
you're gonna secure your container platform. Now, like I said with Unraid, ours already has the built-in functionality, which you would not be exposing to the web. So since you're not exposing Unraid server to the web, unless you're using something like Tailscale, following our video on that, then having Portainer can be a secure way for you to manage your containers without having to jump into your Unraid server remotely. Next up, which has become easily one of my favorite tools, is Dozzle. For those using containers, whether it's Unraid or anywhere else you're using Docker, checking the logs is absolutely vital. Just like anything in the computer world, troubleshooting can be difficult. So the harder it is to troubleshoot, the longer it's gonna to take to fix it. The tool like Dozzle, for example, makes that super easy. Doesn't matter how many containers you've got, Dozzle will make it super simple. As it says, it's a small lightweight application with a web-based interface to monitor Docker logs. It doesn't store any log files and it's for live monitoring of your container logs only. Just to give you an example, here it is deployed on our Unraid server. So on the main page, you can see, all right, how many containers we've got, how many are running, and what version of Dozzle we've got here. We'll also show you the recent starts in what order they started. Then you can go to all, for example, now on the left hand side, we've got the actual container. So if I click on a container, let's say add miner, here's a complete log of what's going on. So we can have a nice easy way to see what's happening. Perhaps you want to see what Ophelia is doing or better yet, Bazaar. What about Dozzle itself? You really can't get any easier and it makes it very easy to troubleshoot in a nice clean way. If you go to the settings, you've got some more options here. For example, what sort of display you want for your time, timestamps, what sort of font, uh, whether you want to search within the logs, you can do that as well. Showing any stop containers and changing the theme. So we can change it to a light theme there. All you people watching in the dark are probably going to be upset by that. Next up is net data or net data, depending where you are in the world. This one was a new one to me and I can tell you right now, it's definitely going to be staying on my server. The amount of detail that this application provides is absolutely phenomenal and I highly recommend it for all administrators to get something like this set up to give you real peace of mind and information on what your server is doing and what all the applications inside of it are doing. So in a similar vein to some of the apps we've shown, it does give you logs, but it also gives you really rich information, stuff to make it easier to work with. It supports hundreds of integrations, thousands of metrics, zero config. And that's the most important part. I've used tools similar to this before and you know, it was just an absolute headache to try and integrate it into all these different sockets to get it to work. This just works out of the box. You can't complain with that. I'm gonna show you exactly what it looks like here on our server. So we're using the netdata-glibc version and this one supports NVIDIA graphics cards as well. So very useful if you're trying to monitor your graphics cards. We'll go to the web UI now this is completely out of the box guys, I haven't configured anything, I haven't even gone into the settings. This is exactly as it is right from the start. So you could have this as a potential dashboard application sitting up on a screen with your server, whatever the case might be, giving you all that detailed information. On the right hand side we've got a very long list. Now on that list we've got all sorts of different information that we can narrow down to. So if we want to have a look at CPU for example, here's our CPU tab. If you wanted to go even further, you've got utilization, interrupts, throttling, all of that underneath CPUs. What about memory? We can go have a look at our memory and see what that's doing. You know, get detailed information, exact seconds of what's happening. Now I've never seen anything this detailed, but this clean. Even our disks are supported. So if you didn't want to use Scrutiny, you do have the option to use something like this. I still think Scrutiny is perfect where it is and has its place. This is giving us a, a different sort of view on what's happening. So let's go to Plex for example. Under Plex we can see a quick view of what it's doing and how much resources it's using, but then we can narrow it down and see the exact core that it's using, how much memory is being chewed up, the amount of used memory and swap memory for example. So all of this information is completely vital. I mean you need to know what your server is doing. We can even narrow it down to our sensors on the computer itself. So if we want to know temperatures, for example, that's being monitored too. Plenty of features here that, again, we won't be able to cover all of it today, but you can pause, play, get that information, print it to the dashboard. So if you wanted to do that, that would work. You can export snapshots. You can even import snapshots. You check news and check version. Down the left-hand side, we can go to settings, and then you've got more settings in here to help customize it the way that you like. 
So yeah, definitely one that you guys should pick up uh, pretty much straight away. For our next one, we've got Uptime Kuma. Now in a previous video, I've done a video on Kshit and how to get that working. And look, Kshit is good. Uh, it did have a lot of stuff in around. And like I said, we want to try to make things as easy as possible. That was quite a while ago. So now we've got a new up-to-date application that's been sort of catching a lot of attention. And that's this app, Uptime Kuma. It's a self-hosted monitoring tool like Uptime Robot. Now, if you look at its interface, it looks very similar to Uptime Robot, nice and clean. I really like it. And again, it works really easily right out of the box. And there's a lot of features in here that make it easy to monitor. So it's not just, you know, a uh, get request to see whether the website is up. You can actually configure all the sorts of different codes that you want. For example, if you guys are using Cloudflare, if the website is offline, but Cloudflare is still presenting its 502 page, that's something that a lot of things won't allow you to monitor. It'll basically assume that the website is up unless it gets a 404. Whereas, you know, Cloudflare might give you a 503 error or a 526 error, for example. This will allow you to customize it down to that level. And did I mention it's free? You've also got notifications ready to go straight into it. 20 second intervals, ping charts, certificate information. So if you, you know, you want to monitor how long your certificate's got on it, it's all there. Really simple to set up. Again, through the community app store, it was straight plug and play. We didn't need to do any special configuration and I highly recommend it if you're managing websites and you just want to know when it's up. Next up is Putty. Now, if you guys are familiar with using SSH, then Putty is a tool that you've probably already used or plan to use in the future. Now, Putty is typically installed on your client machine. However, with the beauty of Docker, it's been brought into a container for us. So we can actually use Putty straight in a Docker container and be able to access it wherever we are in the world, for example. So here, for example, we've uh, opened it up using our container and we can pretty much type in any host we want and connect to it that way all within our browser without having to set up or install anything separately straight out of the box. And guys, last but not least, we're going to be mentioning Go Access, a really useful tool. Go Access is an open source real time web log analyzer. It's also an interactive viewer that runs in a terminal. As you can see from these screenshots, Go Access is a very, very nice looking way to check out all of your data right inside your browser. So without having to worry about it too much, we can actually see all the information that's coming through our network interfaces, how much data, everything, right down to, you know, 404s, for example, or static requests. What are the visitors' host names and IPs? Where are they coming from? You know, operating systems. So this gives you very, very detailed information on who's getting access to your server and what information they're getting, how much data they're getting. You're even getting referrals and virtual hosts, for example. So it works in conjunction with our things like Matamo, for example. You've got some extra options to customize the appearance. Really useful app. I think it's very important, especially if you're someone that's reverse proxying your information out there. Highly recommend you check that one out. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. That was our top 10 tools video to help you get the most out of your server and become a real administrator getting vital information on what your server is doing. I'm sorry I couldn't cover every single app in great detail, but it allows you to get a grasp on some really nice tools that you can go and have a play with. And like I said, if there's something that you guys wanna see in more detail that you, that's piqued your interest, please, by all means, drop it in the comments below. And we can't wait to see you in the next Ubercorp video.